I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website globalmathinstitute.com. In this video, we are going to learn how do we prove Thales theorem. We'll adopt two different approaches to prove Thales theorem. One is going to be based on geometry and the other one will be based on vectors. You can see how things are connected. So the whole concept here is to connect and learn and create a very creative thinking to be successful. In case you want to learn from me, you can always contact me on the email address given here. We can have one-on-one -on -one Zoom classes. Now, what is Thales theorem? Thales theorem states that if A, B, and C are distinct points on a circle where the line AB is the diameter, then the angle ACB is the right angle. It is a known fact for many persons, but proving this is kind of difficult, right? We'll see how do we do that. So here we have a circle O. The center is at O. And we have taken three points, A, B, and C. A, B is the diameter, and C is another point on the semicircle. We have to show that this particular angle is 90 degrees. That is what we need to prove. This concept is also a very special concept which you have proven using circle theorems. It is a special case of any angle formed on the circle is actually speaking half of the angle at the center. So or the central angle is twice that angle. So that is also a proof of this particular theorem which you have adopted while dealing with circle theorem, correct? So in our case, what we are going to do is we'll adopt two methods, one using the geometry and the other using vectors. Now, for some students, vectors, they might not have learned so far. However, some concepts they can pick on early using this. And for others who are doing vectors, they can connect with the concepts they learned already in geometry. So what we'll do is I will connect the point C to the center O. And as you can see, AO will be equal to CO. And that is going to be equal to OB since they are part of radius, right? So they are all radius. So their length is R. Now, that also gives you one more thing, that if two sides of a triangle are equal, that means it is an isosceles triangle, meaning that the, the angles, which we are talking about as shown here, will be equal. And also, the angles in the other triangle, which is OBC, will also have two angles in their base BC as equal. So, as you can see, we have these isosceles triangles, correct? And also this radius is same. So now you can apply the concepts learned in geometry to show that the angle at C is indeed 90 degrees. You get the idea. So I can now be sure that most of you can prove it. So I'll try, you all can try to prove. So that is the concept. Now, as far as the vectors are concerned, the concept for vectors is dot product. So, when we talk about vectors, we know dot product gives us the condition for orthogonal or perpendicular. So, if I have a vector, let us say we call one of these vectors as V and the other vector as 
as u. In that case, the dot product of vector v and u is basically the magnitude of vector v times the magnitude of vector u times cos of the angle theta between them. Correct? So that is the dot product. Now, if theta is equal to 90 degrees, in that case, cos theta will be equal to 0 and therefore, the dot product will be 0. So, that will lead to dot product equal to 0. Well, in our case, we'll look into the vector C A and C B. So, in our case, what you have to prove is that the vector C A dot C B is equal to 0. Then you can show that we have right angles at C. You get the idea. So, that's the definition of dot product. So, I hope from here you can actually prove the theorem. So, now let me show you exactly how to prove it. You can verify your solutions. So, the first case which we are taking is considering the geometry part. So, what I have done here is connected the center O with point C. Now, as we have seen, we are having isosceles triangles. OBC is an isosceles triangle. So, if angle B at B is beta, then we'll have beta as angle OCB also, right? So, those two angles will now be same. Similarly, in the triangle OAC, the two angles shown here will be equal. So, I have made them alpha and, and alpha. So, those are the angles shown. Now, what is the sum of all the angles in a triangle? In any triangle, the sum of angles is 180 degrees, correct? So, let us see what is the sum of angles in triangle ABC. We can add all these angles. So, we get what? We get alpha plus alpha plus beta plus beta. And that should be equal to 180 degrees. Perfect. So, which is 2 times alpha plus 2 times beta should be equal to 180 degrees twice alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. Correct. So, that means what? I can now divide by 2 and clearly we have alpha plus beta equals to 180 degrees by 2 which is 90 degrees. And therefore, we have shown that this particular angle here is indeed 90 degrees. You see that. So, if AB is the diameter, in that case, AO and OC are the radius. OB is also the radius. So, we have these two isosceles triangles. The angles being equal, adding them up, gives us 180 divided by 2 as an angle at C. And therefore, it is a right angle triangle. So, I hope this Proof is straightforward. You have completely understood it. Now, let us look into the vectors concept. So, that is a new concept for many of my students. Uh, we like to share with them some properties of vectors. So, as I said earlier, uh, vector is kind of a linear combination in, in a particular given direction. So, vectors have magnitude and direction. So, now let me introduce to you some of the vectors here. So, let O to A vector will be represented by an arrow on the top be a vector. We will call this vector as V. So, that bar indicates the direction from O to A. So, if that is B, V, in that case, what is the vector O to B? Well, in that case, the vector O to B, since it is in the opposite direction, will have a negative sign and be negative v. So, these are the two vectors. They are collinear, but they are facing in different directions and therefore, one is negative of the other. They, we also refer to them as opposite vectors. Correct? 
magnitude being same, direction is reverse. Now let vector OC be u. So I'm giving from O to C as a vector u. So that is how I've defined my vectors. Now what we need to show is that the dot product of C to A and C to B is zero. So let's find what is C to A. So we want to show what is the dot product of the vector C A and C B. C A means this direction will mean you have to go in this direction and then come. So in a triangle, that is kind of a path, easy to understand. Now if you go from C to O, then it is reverse of U. And in this, it is same as V. So that can be said as minus U plus V, right? So this is minus U plus V dot C to B. So going from C to B means go from C to U, O, which is vector U negative, right? And then from O to B, which is minus V. So these are the vectors and we'll have a dot product of these vectors. Let's open the bracket, apply the distributive property. So in that case, what do we get? We get minus u times minus u, right? So, so when you multiply these two vectors, minus and minus becomes positive and we get u square and they are in the same direction. So we get the magnitude of u square, right? So, so this gives you, uh, let me write down, we'll write it in two lines. Okay, so it is minus u dot minus u and then we have plus minus u dot minus v and then multiplying with dot product with v will be plus v dot minus u and v minus v. So those becomes a vector. So when you have product of the same vector, you get square of that with the same direction. So cos of zero is one, right? So we have, we know that A dot B is magnitude of A times magnitude of B times cos of theta. So when it is in the same direction, in that case, the theta angle is zero. So you know that cos theta is 1 for theta equals to 0. So cos of 0 degrees is 1. So using that, we know when I do the dot product, I just get the magnitudes multiplied. Minus minus becomes plus. So we get magnitude of u squared. Well, those of you who know the property of vectors, that becomes easy. Now here, minus and minus is plus. So we get plus u dot v. Here we have plus and minus. So it is minus v dot u and here we have minus v dot v that means magnitude of v square so that is how we get our equation and we know that in this particular case since the radius is the magnitude so magnitude of u is equal to magnitude of v and it is equal to the radius of the circle so therefore, u square and v square magnitudes are same. So when you have minus of these, they will become zero. You get the idea, right? So we can write this as u square minus v square, bringing it together. And here, dot product is commutative. And therefore, we can write this as u dot v minus u dot v. So that gives you what? Since these two magnitudes are zero and it is u dot v minus u dot v, that is also equal to zero. Now, since the dot product is zero, we know that the angle at C is 90 degrees. AC and 
CB are perpendicular. And so we can say since dot product is zero, that implies that the angle ACB equals to 90 degrees. Is that clear to you? Right? So that is how we can actually prove it. So what you've learned in this particular exercise is two different ways which we discussed, two different ways of proving Thiel's theorem. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and in case you want to learn from me, you can always send an email on the address given. We can have one-on-one -on -one Zoom classes to learn. Thanks for your time and all the best.